A monster tsunami on the North Sea. The Netherlands, Germany and Denmark, pure devastation everywhere. In this video, you will learn why this concerns researchers. It will be super exciting. So make sure to stick around until the end. Welcome everyone. Before we start, a quick request. A subscription, like, and or comment really helps me a lot because the video is then displayed to even more people. Thank you very much. So, let's get to the topic. Tsunamis, these massive monster waves, fascinate and terrify us in equal measure. The devastating images from the Indian Ocean in 2004 or from Japan in 2011 have been deeply etched into our collective memory. Huge masses of water that sweep away everything in their path. No wonder that many people are afraid of such forces of nature. But do we really need to expect a tsunami on the German North Sea coast? Or can we relax and climb into our beach chairs? For a long time, experts assumed that the shallow waters of the North Sea provided natural protection against tsunamis. However, new research findings cast doubt on this assumption because it appears that the German coast has already been hit by a massive tsunami in the past. And that wasn't really that long ago in geological terms. As one might think, researchers from the University of Mainz have discovered evidence of a prehistoric tsunami in sediment cores from the North Frisian peninsula of Eiderstedt. The traces suggest that a massive tidal wave reached far inland about 8,000 years ago. That about 8,000 years ago, a massive tidal wave reached far inland. We found a distinctive layer in the drill cores that shows the typical characteristics of a tsunami deposit. The sediments show signs of a sudden, very energetic flooding, just as we would expect from a tsunami, explains geologist Dr. Peter Frenzel. But how did this prehistoric tsunami happen on the North Sea coast? The answer lies far out to sea, off the coast of Norway. About 8,150 years ago, one of the largest underwater landslides in the history of the Earth occurred there, the so-called Storega landslide. Enormous masses of sediment broke off the continental slope and plunged into the depths. The volume of the rock masses that slid is estimated to be an incredible 3,500 cubic kilometers. This is almost 70 times the volume of Lake Constance. Incidentally, this is a place where tsunamis are not to be expected. This huge underwater landslide triggered a massive tsunami that spread across the entire North Sea. On the coasts of Scotland, the waves reached heights of up to 20 meters. However, it was previously unknown that the tsunami also reached the German North Sea coast. The new findings in Eiderstedt now show that the tidal waves advanced up to 20 kilometers inland at that time. If the tsunami had hit the area around St. Peter Ording as it is today, the water masses would have caused devastation far inland. But one question arises, yes. Why wasn't the tsunami slowed down by the shallow waters of the North Sea? Dr. Frenzel says, our research indicates that the tsunami was able to retain its energy over the long distance better than previously assumed. The shallow waters do not appear to have significantly impeded the spread. Instead, the tsunami apparently used the river valleys as a gateway into the interior. The tidal wave was able to spread far into what is now Schleswig-Holstein via the funnel-shaped estuary of the Ida. These new findings turn our previous understanding of the tsunami risk on the North Sea coast quite upside down. After all, if a prehistoric tsunami was able to reach the coast, wouldn't it still be possible today? To answer this question, we need to look at how tsunamis are created in the first place. Most tsunamis are triggered by earthquakes under the seabed. When the tectonic plates shift abruptly, an enormous column of water is set in motion. At the beginning, little of this can be seen at the surface. But underwater, the energy spreads as a wave at an enormous speed. Up to 800 kilometers per hour are possible. Only when the wave reaches shallower waters does it pile up into a destructive wall of water. In the North Sea, strong earthquakes are fortunately very rare. The tectonic plates here only move minimally. However, there are also other possible triggers for tsunamis. Large underwater landslides can also generate massive tidal waves, just like the prehistoric Storega tsunami. And in fact, there have been small underwater slides in the North Sea even in more recent times. The risk of a major tsunami in the North Sea is low, but not zero. We are monitoring seismic activity and slope stability in the North Sea very closely. Large-scale landslides like the one at Storega are rather unlikely today, but we cannot rule them out completely, explains Dr. Jürgen Neuig from the Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency. Another potential tsunami source is located far out in the Atlantic. 
The Cumbre Vieja volcano on the Canary Island of La Palma is considered unstable. If the western flank of the volcano were to collapse into the sea during the eruption, it could trigger a massive tsunami. Computer models show that the tidal wave could also reach the European coast. However, the waves would probably be significantly weakened in the North Sea. In addition to these major scenarios, there is also the danger of smaller tsunami-like waves in the North Sea. So-called meteor tsunamis. They are not caused by earthquakes or landslides, but by specific weather conditions. And sheet weather is really nothing unusual in the North Sea. Hey guys, just a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel now. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'll have to roast this baby Yoda here at the plasma ball. Ah, you subscribed and activated the bell. Perfect. Baby Yoda is saved and now let's continue with the video. When a storm system moves at exactly the same speed as the water waves it generates, the waves can build up into a larger tidal wave. Such meteor tsunamis have been observed several times in the North Sea. The most well-known case occurred on June 5, 1858. Without warning, a tidal wave up to 6 meters high swept over the coasts from Denmark to the Netherlands. Fishing boats were washed ashore. The people had to be brought to safety. For a long time, the cause of these waves, referred to as sea lions, was mysterious. Only recently were researchers able to identify the phenomenon as a meteor tsunami. Dr. Newig warns, meteor tsunamis can be quite dangerous on the North Sea coast. They often occur very suddenly and are difficult to predict. They can build up, especially in river estuaries, and cause flooding. However, meteor tsunamis usually do not reach the destructive power. Large tsunamis. And speaking of prediction, how well prepared are we for a possible tsunami in the North Sea? How worried should you be if you are standing on the North Sea dike or speeding through the sea in a ferry after the devastating disaster in the Indian Ocean in 2004? A tsunami early warning system was also set up in Europe. The center is in Hamburg. This is where the warning center for tsunamis in the Northeast Atlantic is located. Experts monitor seismic activity and sea levels around the clock. Our system can detect a possible tsunami very quickly and issue warnings. However, the advance warning time on the German coast would be relatively short, depending on the scenario, only a few hours, explains Dr. Newig. This could be tight when evacuating coastal areas. After all, unlike the Storega tsunami 8,000 years ago, we would not be completely unprepared today. Despite all the precautions, there is still a certain residual risk. But how great is the danger? Dr. Frenzel gives a cautious all clear. The probability of a devastating tsunami on the German North Sea coast is very low. We are talking here about events that statistically occur only every few thousand years. By comparison, the risk from storm surges is significantly higher. These threaten the coast on average every few decades. Nevertheless, the researchers urge caution. The new findings about the prehistoric Storega tsunami show that we should not underestimate the danger. We have to include the tsunami risk in our long-term coastal protection concepts. Even if major events are rare, we should be prepared for them, warns Dr. Frenzel. There's no reason for vacationers on the North Sea coast to panic. The chance of being surprised by a tsunami here is very low. Is very low? It's much more likely that you'll be attacked by a seagull on the beach that has its eyes on the fries. That happened to us during our New Year's vacation. We were in Emden where we got delicious fish sandwiches and fries. And then a vicious seagull swooped down and everything fell to the ground. My lovely crab sandwich. So folks, don't be afraid of monster waves. Enjoy your beach holiday too. Nevertheless, it is fascinating to see the tremendous forces that have shaped the Earth's history. The traces of the Storega tsunami impressively show how dynamic our planet is and that even seemingly stable coastal landscapes can change dramatically over geological periods of time. La nature nous réserve toujours des surprises et un jour, un tel accident statistique provoquera à nouveau un tsunami. En mer du Nord, and now let's change hemispheres and travel to Antarctica. A German researcher spent a whole year there and made an incredible discovery. I talked to him and the experiences from the Antarctic winter will blow your mind, I promise. Be sure to click on the video in the top right corner to watch it. And if you click in the bottom right corner, you will find another exciting topic from science and space, as always. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.